Today we're going to go inside the tackle box. Um, one of the most common questions that I get asked is, how come I'm not catching fish? And uh, as you can see, we got a lot of tackle laid out in front of us. Uh, we've got various hooks, uh, bobbers and floats, baits. What do they all have in common? Well, first off, especially for the, the newbie, this can be quite confusing. Uh, one of the things we'd like to simplify today is looking at your hook selection. Now, I, I always tell people, the first thing I like to do is look at their tackle and see what they're fishing for and how they're doing it. So one of the things I look at uh, primarily is their hook size and choice. Now, if you've ever been in the tackle aisle at the you know, at the superstore or you're out at uh, a Bass Pro shop or Cabela's, and you're taking a look through all the different hooks. I know it can be confusing. Um, I didn't learn all this overnight. But one thing I did know is if you look at the hooks, here we've got some, uh, some different single hook designs. We've got some trebles. They all share one thing in common. And that is, if you look at the sizes on there, an example, we've got 10, 8, 6, then generic number 2. What I can tell you is in the hook sizes, the smaller the number on the single hooks, on the single uh, number hooks, if you get a larger number, you've got a smaller size hook. As an example, that's a number 10 treble. Okay, then if you look down here, we've got some number 10 size uh, bait hooks, and then we go up to a number eight. If you go over here to number eight treble, it gets slightly larger than the number 10. And if we look at the number six, now that one's uh, got a dressing on it for a topwater bait, but it's still the hook size doesn't change. If you look at those, you go 10, 8, 6. Then on this double hook that goes on the back of an older style topwater bait, that's a number 2. And what that typically represents is on the numbers, um, you've got a smaller gap on the hook. Now I don't care we've got uh, an offset shank or true turn type hook next to it's an Aberdeen. We got a little uh, bait or egg holder and then just a regular uh, short short shank hook. Now Aberdeen, whether you've got a bait holder or if you go over to these guys over here, you've got the, the octopus style. Again, the Aberdeen, again, the straight. The gaps don't change on that number of hook. It's just a style or design. We can get into the semantics of that at another time, but size on the hook is going to matter. As an example, if I'm fishing for uh, crappie, I like a number, number six, or the very largest next to it is a number four. Uh, we've even got some larger ones over here, the number two style, but on those, Number four and number two, I'm typically going into live bait for bass, uh, using it for minnows. Uh, same with the crappie style hooks. When I get into the smaller guys, we go six, eight, and ten. That's going to be live bait like worms, larvae, like a wax worm or bee moth larvae, uh, maggots. I know they sound disgusting, but they're amazing for catching fish. One of those things that can help you is if you remember that, um, that sizing will help you to pick the correct hook. Remember, if you're fishing for bluegill, um, uh, panfish, sunfish, you're typically dealing with a fish with a smaller mouth, and that's where these hooks come into play. Now, in the larger ones, like the bass sizes, you've got three odd. On top here, um, I've got the largest and the single number. That is a number one. And how we get three odd people... You got a three slash O three odd. Okay, 
Then we go up to a one out hook, and that's uh, that's uh, an offset design. We've got this with a, a wicked bronze old eagle claw with a big offset on that. That just helps with your hook set. And as we move into some of the other ones, we've got um, we've got the two aughts down here and three aughts in different curves, different styles, depending on the bait and how you're doing it. You've got a large uh, large offset. You got the smaller uh, worm style hook, and then you've got the one with the bait hook or a bait keeper spike on it, and that's uh, that little guy there that goes into the top of the bait. And as we look at it, you can go all the way up here to a pre-weighted uh, four odd, five odd. But like I said, it depends on the size bait you're using because obviously you wouldn't want to go to small creature or cross style bait and put it on a big old five odd hook. You're not going to have success. It's going to be very hard to rig it. And the other thing is it won't look natural in the water. Uh, even here with the weighted style hooks, uh, these are some of my favorites, the weighted keeper hook. Mr. Twisters, that is the... We've got the smaller um, number one design with the bait keeper spike. Then we've got the one out, which is slightly heavier. Um, theirs go by uh, sixteenths of an ounce. And then we've got, you know, if you look at the, the swim bait here, this one is really cool. It even tells you. You've got an eighth ounce, typically two to four inch baits. You can go slightly larger depending on it, but here. There's a four inch bait, and obviously if you set it up there, you put it on the spike, you twist it in there into the head, and you rig it, you'll have enough hook to seal in the body of the lure and let it let it do its thing through the water, and it'll still have a nice action where it's coming through the water like that. But if you're using this um, Mr. Twister Sassy Grub, you wouldn't necessarily want to put that on a big on a bigger hook like that that's when these smaller guys come into play and as you can see if you set it up like that run the spike through and then you can rig it you can rig it texas style to help you from catching weeds on the smaller baits um very thin smaller profile i go with the smaller one if you look at the size to ratio on the hook uh, gives you enough metal for a good hook set but it also there's not a lot of plastic in there to impede your hook set whereas you need the larger hook with the wider opening especially if you've got a body of a lure that's that thick you won't be able to drive a hook set home and you're going to be missing a lot of fish now in some of these uh, swim baits and soft uh, jerk baits you see they've got a channel in the middle and that's where you run your hook through and you want to nick your your hook in the top of that body that'll keep the hook from being exposed but it also allow you to set the hook and drive it through uh, that plastic for a good hook set on the fish whereas like i say if you're using a smaller thinner bodied craw you know it doesn't take much to run the hook through that especially if the hook point is already uh, slightly piercing through it but if you overmatch it you're gonna have problems with the presentation and um, you probably won't have as much success now, on this particular one I've got a, a slider head that's by Charlie Brewer if you notice we've got the hook point just sticking out barely and you see the size of the lure with that 16th ounce head and they go up to like 3 sixteenths and 8 ounce. You can go a lot heavier. Um, but in that particular one, it's a nice, small, subtle presentation. That'll help you catch a lot of fish. So I hope that was helpful for you today um, to try and settle some of the debate and how confusing hooks can be.